Hi, this is Greg from the Rio Grande Tech Team, and today I'm going to show you how to make a quick RTV mold. Okay, so these are going to be the tools that you will need for your RTV mold. Um, I'm using a wax pen, uh, your model of course, some sticky wax, uh, then you've got the frame, the plates, and rubber bands, and really that's it. Got to get some sticky wax on here. And I'm going to put a little bit of sticky wax on here. Melt it down a little bit, get a nice surface. Then I'm going to heat this up again. It cools down really quickly. And then we're going to attach it like that. So it's in the center this way and this way. Now I'm just going to go around and kind of seal it up on the back. And make sure there aren't any little holes or anything. I want to make sure it's sealed. That looks pretty good. Now, so it is centered. I could actually bend it back a little bit. Centered that way, centered that way. I'm going to put the plates on. Clean them a little bit. And rubber bands to hold them in place. Just so they don't slide. And there we go. So these are the materials you're going to need to make your RTV mold. You're going to need your model framed up. You're going to need a ruler. You're going to need the RTV material, the rubber, uh, a mixing container, and a scale, and a spatula. So to start with, we need to figure out how much material we need. So we're going to have to measure length, width, and height of the mold. And the little bit of math on this formula, here's what we do. Length times width times height, and those are all volumes or an area. This we're going to multiply at the end. This is a conversion factor that will allow us to go from a volume to a weight that we can weigh out on a scale. So let's measure the volume of this frame. And I'm going to use uh, this top uh, scale instead of inches. I'm going to use centimeters, which are the big numbers. So remember, there are 10 millimeters per centimeter. So this is 1 centimeter, 2, 3, but there's actually 10, 20, 30 millimeters, but we're going to use centimeters for the measurement. So this way, it's going to measure, I'm going to say 5.2. The width is 3.2. And the height of the mold that we want it to be, I'm not going to go all the way up to the top of the frame. I'm going to go about 6. So let's enter these numbers. Okay, 5.2 times 3.2 equals 16 times 6 is 99.84 times 1.1 is about 110. I'm just going to round that up to 110. So I'm going to say this is 110, and that's in grams, because that's what I multiplied this for was to convert it to grams. So that's what I need for part A, which is the big part of the, the rubber. The second part is the catalyst, and that's one-tenth of this. So if, I, if there's a decimal here, I'm just going to move that over. So the catalyst is going to be 11 grams, and the part A is 110 and 11. All right, so this is my mixing container. And I'm going to put this on the scale. And it's got a weight of uh, 52.28, but this is a nice scale that I can tear out or zero out. So now when I add the rubber, it's just going to weigh the, the, the rubber or the part A material. So let's do that. Let's weigh this out. And remember, part A is 110 grams. Just going to use a spatula. Fifty-five. It's about half of it. Getting pretty close there. And I'll take just a tiny bit off. All right, that's good. Okay, that's the part A. Now, the catalyst 
is going to be 11 grams. So what I'm going to do is tear this again, and I'm just going to go with 11 grams. And I'm going to try to pour it all around so it's not just collected in one place, kind of even. Oops, that's a little too much, but it'll be all right. Okay, so let's start the mixing. As soon as you add the catalyst to the part A, um, you're going to start a reaction, although it's not really much of a reaction because it's not thoroughly mixed. But you have about an hour, uh, an hour working time, and when you mix it, I'm just going to mix it by hand. I'm not going to use an electric mixer or anything. I don't want to introduce any more air than I have to. I just want to kind of fold it. Fold it over. I mean, you can't help but add a little bit, but if it's possible, try not to add any more than you need. But you do need to make sure that it's thoroughly mixed with the bottom and the sides. I can see that there's some catalyst over here. All right, that's pretty good, pretty thorough. Now we're going to go to the vacuum and pull some of these air bubbles out. Okay, so the next step here is to vacuum out the RTV material. Uh, when we mixed it, we introduced a lot of bubbles, and now we have to pull these out because you don't want uh, you don't want bubbles next sticking to your model because every time you make an injection, there'll be a little bubble, uh, a wax bubble. So we have to vacuum if we want to, if we want to have a good mold. Here's what we do: put it under the bell jar and turn on the pump. The gauge should go up to around 25 pounds at this elevation, or 25 inches of mercury at this elevation. Uh, if you're at sea level, it's going to be closer to 30. I like to run the vacuum long enough for it to rise and boil and then have it fall and then go another few minutes after that. You may have to release the pressure if it looks like it's going to overflow. It's really thick material, so it'll rise slowly. Here you can see it falling. See that? Collapses. Now after that collapse, I like to run it for another minute or so. All right. That's good enough. Now I'm going to add the RTV material after it's been vacuumed. When I do this, I'm going to try to pour it down the side. Don't hit the, hit the model because this stuff is heavy and you can snap it off. You could actually also sc scrape it along the inside. Just want to make sure I get it all out. It's kind of messy, but there it is. Okay, so now we're going to vacuum this again. We vacuumed out most of the bubbles in the initial mixing container, but now we've added this rubber to the wax model, and there are some bubbles right next to the piece, so let's vacuum those out. I like these mold frames because they're nice and tall and you'll see that the RTV material when you pull the bubbles out it rises a lot and having a tall frame will give it room to rise and not overflow. So these are good frames for RTV. There may be an air bubble trapped under the uh, the pad which will try to uh, raise the bottom make it a little rounded and it's not really an issue. If you put your frame next to the edge, it won't tip over. It'll just lean against the side, which is fine. But you can see the, the RTV is uh, coming up. It's quite a bit. A lot of those bubbles are popping. And we're just going to let this go for maybe five minutes or so. Okay, so now we've pulled our frame out of the vacuum. And if you look at it, you'll see that there are quite a few bubbles in there. These bubbles are really tiny and they're, they're actually micro bubbles, but they've been expanded because of being in the vacuum. Uh, don't worry about those. As long as you don't see any big, big bubbles attached to your model, which I don't, then uh, it should be fine. And what I do is I just uh, put it 
Uh, I set it in a warm place overnight and they're usually done when I come in the morning. And what they look like is this in the morning. So this one we did before and I'm going to break this out. I'll show you how to break, break it out after it's cured. Uh, it's pretty easy. These are aluminum so they collapse a little bit. It'll stick to the plates and then kind of break, pull this away. Kind of wants to stick. And you break it, you'll hear a snap. There, that was the sprue former with the section. And this is gonna match up really nice with your wax pot nozzle. And there it is, it's ready to cut. So that's the making of a simple RTV mold. If you have any questions, contact us at Rio Grande.